Hi everyone, this is Dr. Karaka from Ejo Academy and this video is about using Mohr circle for stress transformation. Here is the problem statement. Assume a concrete beam with a rectangular cross section that carries an arbitrary loading as shown below. This loading only induces a shear stress of 900 psi at a point located on the neutral axis of the cross section at one of the supports. Calculate the maximum tensile stress at this point. Let's zoom in and illustrate the shear stress at this particular point, but before that I need to highlight a few points here. First of all, note that for a rectangular cross section, shear stress is maximum on the neutral axis and zero at the top and bottom. Also note that shear stress must be zero on any free surface, as a result the direction of the shear stress at this point must be vertical. And finally, plain concrete is a material with a very low tensile strength. Uh, therefore, in a concrete segment under shear stress, cracks form due to excessive tensile stress. That's why this problem asks for evaluating uh, the tensile stress, although the section is only under shear force. Now let's focus on the stress block. Since stress only exists on the YZ plane, the problem can be reduced to a 2D problem. Generally, when multiple planes are under stress, as long as the behavior is linear elastic, each plane can be analyzed separately. Projecting the stresses on the YZ plane, uh, normal stress is zero, and there is only shear stress of 900 psi applying on both Y and Z planes. Just a quick reminder about the convention of the shear stress subscripts. Um, the first letter indicates the plane where uh, the shear stress acts on, while the second letter refers to the direction of the shear stress. So if both have the same algebraic signs, the shear stress is assumed to be positive. Here, the 900 psi shear stress acts on the positive side of the z-axis in positive direction of the y-axis, so the shear stress is plus 900 psi. To be able to draw the Mohr circle, we need uh, two points on the opposite sides of the circle diameter. To obtain the coordinate of these points, uh, the stresses should be represented separately on both uh, y and z-planes. We follow the stress sign convention for the Mohr circle which says for normal stress tension is positive and compression is negative. Uh, in this problem both normal stresses are zero. For the shear stress, the shear couple on the left side causes counterclockwise rotation so it is considered positive. Uh, the shear stress on the right side though is the negative because it causes uh, clockwise rotation. Now, let's transfer these points onto a 2D coordinate system. Uh, note that the horizontal axis represents the normal stress, which tension would be positive and compression would be negative. The vertical axis represents the shear stress, which positive direction would be downward. After locating these two points, uh, we can now draw uh, the Mohr circle. Principal stresses are the location of the maximum and minimum normal stresses, which are obtained by rotating the diameter of the Mohr circle from its current position. According to the Mohr circle convention, the magnitude of this angle is twice as the rotation on the actual stress block, but the direction of this rotation is the same on both the Mohr circle and the stress block. Since the angle of rotation on the Mohr circle is 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise, we need to uh, rotate the stress block 45 degrees counterclockwise. If we rotate the stress block associated with a negative 900 psi shear stress by 45 degrees counterclockwise, we get a new stress block uh, with compressive stress of 900 psi. Similarly, rotating the stress block with the plus 900 psi shear stress by 45 degrees counterclockwise would give us a new stress block with 900 psi tensile stress. Now that we obtained the principal stresses, let's get back to the concrete beam and map the transform stresses onto the cross section. Materials uh, usually don't have identical behavior under different loading conditions. Uh, concrete is weak in tension and cracks form at a very low tensile stress. So in this problem, we should focus on the maximum tensile stress. By mapping the calculated tensile stress on the section, we can see that uh, in this concrete beam, cracks uh, will form in 45 degree angle relative to the cross section. All right, everyone, uh, that was it for this video. If you'd like to see more of this topic and other topics of the strengths of material, you can also study the practice ebook that my colleague and I put together. Till next video, cheers.